Nicholas here. I'd like to talk today about Steamrollers, which is a 30 to 45 minute game for supposedly two to five players. The goal of the game really is to deliver goods by building up your railroad. At the start of the game, you're going to place random cubes on a shared board, and then every player is going to get their own personal board uh, where they're going to keep track of their score and the details of their railroad. At the start of each round, the first player, indicated by the locomotive, collects all of the dice and rolls them. The black die will be set aside and used by all players. The white dice will be used to perform actions. The first player chooses one and does their action. The next player does the same, and so on until only one die remains. Then the start player rotates and a new round begins. With your die, you have a few options. One is to draw track. You must draw in the region corresponding to the die value that you took, and also a type of track indicated by the black die. Once you draw track in a hex, you cannot draw track in there ever again. Another option that you have is to upgrade your locomotive, in which case you simply mark off the box corresponding to the die value. Thirdly, you can choose to make a delivery, in which case you pick a good from the region corresponding to the die value. It effectively appears in the city with that value and must be delivered to the city corresponding to the color of the cube. Here I'm going to use three links, one, two, three, and that tells me how many points I will earn for making the delivery, which is three, and also the minimum strength of my locomotive, which is three, and I have that much. If you have more locomotive strength, it does not help you. The last option that you have is to take the special card corresponding to the die value that you chose. The highlights for me of this game are that I really like the spatial puzzle that you get from looking at all the cubes at the start of the game and trying to figure out how to best build up your network. It also captures some of the interaction that I normally see in uh, route or network building games. Um, but in those, you usually have to manipulate a central board that's shared by all the players. And a lot of that is about blocking other people from building routes potentially. Uh, in Steamrollers though, even though everyone is drawing their own networks on their own personal player boards, there is an element of interaction in that if someone has a very similar network to you, then they're going to be making very similar deliveries. And that will probably mean less points for both of you in the long run. Uh, there's also the general question of uh, when to shift from building up your railroad to actually making deliveries and scoring points. Uh, sometimes you'll uh, actually start making some deliveries and then build up some more and then make some more deliveries. It depends on the situation. The special ability cards I think are fairly well done. Uh, there are a couple that are just generally good to have if you can get your hands on them, but most of the time they're situational and you have to think a little bit more carefully about whether or not it's worth spending your turn on taking that card. Some of the things I think are less good are that the game, I, in my mind, is really a three or four player game, even though the box says two to five. Um, the two player game is just not interactive enough. I think, um, and the five player game gets to be a little bit crazy. You can't keep track of uh, the different networks that people are building as well, just because there's so many of them to look at. And there's just so much stuff that can happen before your next turn in terms of, uh, you know, sometimes you'll think that you'll get to make some deliveries and then all the cubes from the regions that you were hoping to deliver were delivered. And that's just much more likely to happen in five players than three players, for example. Um, there are also some production issues in the initial print run, which is what my copy is from. The cube colors did not match well. I've uh, replaced the cubes with ones that match better. Um, and I'm not very fond of the pad of paper that was included for the personal player boards. Uh, you just tear off a sheet and then use a pen or a pencil on it. Um, I prefer dry erase markers in general. Uh, and for this game, I think that the markers are a real help in terms of being able to look at what your opponents are doing with their networks, which I think is very important. 
Um, but hopefully those will be fixed in later print runs. Um, there's also a small problem in that you might find yourself building up the same networks all the time. However, the game does include a variant that at the start of the game, you're going to roll a die and everyone will draw walls on their map. Uh, and that sort of forces you to change up the types of networks that you're building, which is nice. Um, I would like to see more variability. And I know that the designer is working on a set of expansion modules along those lines, as well as an improved two player version. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to talk today about steamrollers. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Bye bye.